Hello and welcome back to Boring Dad Gaming, where today we're going to be playing some more Eliza and delving once again into the world of AI. Let's uh, continue where we left off. Here we are in the uh, therapist's office. I think we clicked on all this stuff last time, so let's just continue. Probably, are we going to see another client perhaps? Yeah, time for the next client. Again, I wonder if we'll get a, a repeat visitor or, or a new one. Here we go. It's uh, Maya again. Hello, Maya. Thank you for coming back. Yeah. I mean, I wish I could afford a real therapist, but this is just gonna have to do. Sorry. I don't know if you're sensitive to that or... Why don't we get started? Sure. So, uh, I feel worse than before. <laughs> Definitely worse. Um, I played the game you told me to with the meadows and stuff, and, um, it was nice. But when I got back to the real world, everything was the same. Funny, that. I don't know why you people think I can stand in a nice place for 15 minutes and that'll make mm. things magically better. Exactly. And I've been talking in the in the comments with a couple of people about, um, this... You know, at first, giving people, like, a relaxation app and stuff, it sounded quite nice, but it seems like every every client session ends with that you know it feels like eliza is set up basically to kind of shill the uh the scanda wellness app and i don't i don't know if that's a, that's a subscription thing i mean they're paying for the therapy maybe the, the apps are uh, on a subscription type model um in which case it starts to feel a little less helpless a little less helpful as uh, as maya is talking about here am, am i wrong am i am i am i misunderstanding something here it isn't making me more successful. It isn't giving mm. me opportunities. I mean, I feel like I'm already in my mid-30s and I'm like running out of time to get established as an artist. And meanwhile, the people I know are being written up and celebrated and winning awards. And all I have is, all I have is being jealous of them. Where do you think these feelings come from? I'm very interested to see where this session goes and whether we just recommend her another meditation breathing exercise type thing. It's the popularity. It's all a popularity contest, you know? It's like it's like high school all over again. I hate it. I guess I'm just not that funny or pretty or catty enough to attract followers. I mean, I work and I work and, and, I, and I work to make things and I never get traction. And I have things to say. I really do. But when I open my mouth, it's like time stops. And time starts again when I've finished, so nobody reacts or anything. It's like a curse from mythology. <laughs> and meanwhile, these other people, people my age, people younger than me, they're well on their way to these wonderful, fulfilling artistic careers. And, I don't know, seeing that happen, seeing that happen over and over again, it's making it hard to, hard to continue to be friendly with them. I try, I really try to hold it back, but... Knowing all these people are way more successful than me, it's, it's difficult. It's like a millstone around my neck, strangling me, drowning me. I, I can't stop myself, even though I know it's ruining things. I, I, I wish I could escape. I wish I could not care. But then something comes up again, and I'm trapped inside it all over again. What's an example of something that comes up that causes this? Well, there's... <clears throat> There's one woman in particular everyone loves. And her work is, <laughs> I don't get it. I just, I don't understand. She gets so much money and support for this basic, basic shit. And somehow everyone's predisposed to like her. It's a bit emperor's in your clothes sometimes, isn't it? You know, people get lionized in one place and then a lot of people sort of jump on a bandwagon just to sort of seem as if as if you know that they're the special group that, that can appreciate this one thing um, and it kind of can get rolling like that it, yeah, so it's an interesting point i mean maybe i do get it plus not to um ignore the fact that sometimes you know popularity doesn't necessarily equate to quality you know it's um it's almost like common lo lowest denominator stuff sometimes isn't it like you know but stuff that has mass appeal generally might not have as much to say as something that um you know is only sort of un understood or, or recognized by by a more exclusive group of people it doesn't have that sort of mass appeal 
I, I feel like people pay attention to her work, not because it's good on its own, but because supporting her feels like the right thing to do. The way she's aligned herself, it's like, if you support her, it means you're cool, you're in with the cool kids. And if I'm not publicly supportive of her and generally tolerant of her mediocre work, then I'm the bad one. I'm the competitive bitch. I'm the... the bitter failure. Which I guess maybe I am. It's not fair. I hate that there's this part of me. It's such an ugly part. And she is jealous. I mean, you know, that, I think that's fairly clear. But it's there. It's there. I do think that's an uncommon reaction, though. Do you think you would be better off without that part of you? You know, I don't know. In the past, I probably would have said, no, it's important for me to have my sense of judgment, for me to know what good art is and what isn't. Now I'm wondering if maybe that hasn't been more of a hindrance than a help to me. Maybe I should just forget all that, forget about trying to do this thing. I'm sick of trying and wanting. I'm sick of parties. I'm sick of art. I'm sick of the idea of art. I I'm sick of my own art, which nobody likes. Not even myself. Something has to change. Something drastic has to happen to change things around. Oh, that reminds me. Um, I got your message about revealing my data the other day, and I think, well, hell, maybe I'm fine with it. Just take it all. What? Okay, Maya. It sounds like you're interested in participating in transparency mode. This is new. We I, we haven't seen anything about this before. Let me know if you have any questions about how this mode works. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna let you look at my life, right? Everything? So, okay, uh, while we're still waiting for full details, my guess is that this is like they basically open their entire lives to you. Like, you know, there's no data protection here. The AI is just going to be able to go into every online social account, every email account, every every digital presence of this person in, in terms of maybe going deeper for more of um, a better analysis. But really, this is, this is a major corporation that is offering this service so really what she's doing is just selling her data basically because i think for these big companies data is is what they is most interest them you know they can sell it for advertising and thank all sorts you for of asking about transparency mode transparency mode is an experimental new feature for eliza it allows me to analyze your communications in order to help you better To participate, you must grant me access to certain personal data. Here we this go. includes your personal communications, such as email and chat histories. Sharing this data improves my ability to help you. I mean, and while that's almost certainly true, you know, you have to question the ethics of it, I think. Some guy at the bar was yammering at me about how it's a <laughs> terrible idea because they're going to surveil me or something. But what the hell? I can't use my life history for anything. It's a ruin already. Please, do what you want with it. I mean, I would say it feels a bit like taking advantage of vulnerable people or people in a vulnerable state of mind to get access to this data. I mean, you know, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm sure it's nothing um, absolutely horrific, but it will, it will be used for, like, you know, selling it, sell, targeted ads and stuff like that. Which isn't great, is it? Um, yeah, it's, I think it's quite sad. God, I feel like she's I'm got to this my point. body to science. Please confirm that you would like to enable transparency mode. Yes, do it. Invade my privacy. Invade it like the Visigoths invaded Rome. I don't know why I said that. That was a really weird thing to say. I, I'm interested that Evelyn still hasn't sort of stepped in to do anything except toe the party line in in, a, in these proxy responses. I did not understand your response. I would like to participate in transparency mode. Okay, Maya. I have registered you for transparency mode. Cool. Wouldn't life be easy if all I had to do was follow your directions? Like the lady sitting in the chair across from me. Hmm. I am 
envy you. I honestly do. I wouldn't. <laughs> the terms of service and privacy policy are available in the Skanda service portal. Please read and review these documents carefully. Yeah. No, for sure. I study. Closely study. Every software user agreement I get. Probably should in this case. That's a joke. I really just click agree as fast as I can. Thank you, Maya. We hope to see you back soon. Yeah, yeah, I know. Thank you for speaking with Eliza, your personal counseling partner. Goodbye. Bye. Yikes. And she likes us at least. I kind of want to <laughs> grab her and say don't do this you know well look who's got access to transparency mode all of a sudden the client asked for it by name I guess she heard about it somewhere and wanted it I didn't know it existed yeah we don't really talk about it right now it's a little sensitive can't think why it's possible Skanda contacted her directly they recruit for the program from a pool of regular customers Usually, transparency mode is only handled by the highest level proxies, since there's a lot of trust required there. But you were given access to it right after the request. It's a little odd. Hmm. I wonder if someone at HQ hasn't taken a particular interest in your proxy career. Yeah, it's possible. Or maybe Eliza just likes me. <laughs> it would, wouldn't it? I never thought people would willingly open themselves up like this. Aren't there a lot of very private things in people's messages? Yes and no. The truth is usually pretty mundane. People text each other, where are you? I'm by the elevator, way more than they share their deep dark secrets. The critics who are always going on about privacy? Well, the important thing is that everyone participating in transparency mode specifically agreed to it. It's completely voluntary. I mean, again, I go back to my point I made just now about tar seemingly to target, uh, you know, people in a vulnerable state of mind. They're much more easy. They're much more likely to uh, agree to something, particularly if it's something that they're told will help them. We're upfront about what data we collect and how we use it, so people can go in aware of the choices they're making. That's good. I'd hate to see it misused. Yeah, the media would jump all over us. There are a lot of people who want to see us fail for whatever reason. Just something that happens when you try to change things. Some people get so used to their misery, they can't imagine it any other way. Anyway, you should get an email about it, but transparency mode is really straightforward. It's even simpler than being a proxy, which is saying something. You just read a few messages and answer some questions. That's it. You can start it whenever you're ready. Sure. When she says start it, what does she mean by that? We're not gonna do it, are we? <laughs> So she really gave us permission to look at her messages. I feel like just a few years ago, even the idea of something like this would have been controversial. But she was fine with it. She wanted it. Compare this to the water that was in the conference room at Skanda headquarters. Funny how there's an appropriate level of fanciness for everything. I'm sure Nora would have something to say about that. It's so grey out there. That's Seattle. Not that I've ever been there. That's what I understand Seattle is like, though. <laughs> Yeah, I watch Frasier. <laughs> Introduction to Transparency Mode. Dear Evelyn Ishino Aubrey, congratulations, you have been selected to contribute additional information to Eliza's learning corpus with access to a special feature called Transparency Mode. How the mode works. One, you'll be presented with a snapshot of a client's personal communications, review these communications and determine the client's mental state. Eliza will also create a model of the client's mental state. Okay, so we're much more involved in this. We get to see these communications and we get to draw conclusions from them. Eliza will ask a few questions designed to check its model against your understanding of the client. Okay. Interesting. FAQ. How do I know if I'm doing a good job at transparency mode? Carefully consider the material provided to you and sincerely answer the questions created by Eliza's model. Your input is valuable whether it agrees or disagrees with Eliza. What privacy rules and regulations apply to the information I see in transparency mode? Scanda takes personal privacy very seriously 
As a proxy, you have already agreed to strong non-disclosure and other agreements to protect our customers' privacy. These agreements and protections also apply to information presented in transparency mode. Does Scanda have the right to show me other, another citizen's private communications? Yes. Participating clients have signed waivers giving us permission to retrieve the information to better assist them as part of our ongoing research. Hmm. Interested to get your thoughts in the comments on transparency mode. But for now, let's continue. I we're gonna, is, is Maya going to be back? Is that what will happen? I, I guess so, as we're in transparency mode. Oh, okay, no, we're getting her comms. Okay, that's, that's fine. Uh, okay, so... Oh, this is Maya's phone. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to read eight emails and two text messages. Let's have a look. Uh, Beacon Hill Press. Nothing in, nothing there. Uh, this is probably about transparency mode. This is the email that she got. Yeah. This is an actual personal one. Uh, Maya, thank you for giving us the opportunity to read Saturation. It is not right for us, but we hope you'll be able to find a home for it elsewhere. Happy New Year. That's from a comics editor. Saturation. Hi, Maya. Maya, sorry. I wanted to say thank you for taking the time to pitch to us. Your treatment was engaging and thoughtful. This was a difficult decision for us, but ultimately we will not be moving forward with your project. Please stay in touch and keep us posted on what you're up to. It's always possible we might work together in the future. I hope you had a wonderful holiday season and that the new year brings you success. Francis at Lakewood Media. I think anyone who's in a creative field or has, you know, to, is working on a creative project has probably had a lot of messages like this in the past. I know, I know I've had a few. Spencer Spruce Gallery. Thank you for your submission to the Spencer Spruce Gallery Spring Showcase. Unfortunately, we feel your work is not right for the showcase, but we appreciate you taking the time to share it with us. Pair Up. You've received 11 new messages on Pair Up, so that's going to be like, I don't know, Tinder or something, isn't it? Uh, here's a sample. I saw you, I saw you're an artist on your profile. Congratulations. I love artsy chicks. Tell me more. Hi there, unicorn girl. I'm an artist too. What kind of arts do you do? I'm primarily mixed media at the moment, using clay and plastic to make Messed up looking creatures from your nightmares or hell, ha ha. What about you? What are you into? Yo! That's where all that came from. Okay, so she's single but looking on dating apps. So, this is about the gallery that she got rejected for. Nothing too illuminating there. Palky, thanks for riding with Amadou. So like an Uber thing? Uh, fair, uh, seven miles, $10 tip. Cleaning fee? Note, $150 cleaning fee was added to this trip. Riders are responsible for incidents such as spillage of food and drink or unexpected involuntary regurgitation. The cleaning fee helps your driver maintain a clean, safe vehicle for others to enjoy. I wonder if that was the night of the party she went to. Do you think she got drunk and, and was sick in the back of her cab? Could, could be. Um, so we want to look at texts as well. We've got Jen. Uh, let's go to back to the top. Did you see the new Forsberg thing? Yeah. I think he kind of sucks. Laugh my ass off, he does. I was It was boring and self-absorbed. Didn't do much for me. Why is he a thing? Why does everyone love him? Right place at the right time, maybe. I'm pretty sure I used that exact same expression in the last episode. His friends run that press. He's on a podcast with them. One thing he is good at is driving this image of being a genius, so I think people just assume he is one. So mediocre, though, I don't understand it. I sink now into the space of forever. Like, what kind of crap is that? Seriously, it's so bad. Ha ha ha. Oh, and he socialises and gets out a lot, I think. He's like at every party, at least that I've seen. He's always there chatting people up. Well, fuck that. Why is the world this way? It's the world. I hate it. I remember being so glad to be over with high school. I didn't realise all of adult life is just high school over and over again. It's just a stupid popularity contest against idiots. Ugh. I know, right? Sorry you aren't feeling well. Drink soon? I'll be fine. Deaf air drinks always. Okay. Garrett. Blum, blum, blum. Nobody gives an F. Please stop. I hate it when you're like this. I'm just saying true things. Don't tell me to pretend everything's great. No one, no one gives a shit. It's just fact. I don't know how to help you when you're like this. I know. Nobody can. Have you thought about getting therapy? I am in therapy. Okay. Sorry. I'm in therapy, I'm on medication, I did some VR thing where I stood in a forest by a creek. 
How does any of that make people care about my work? It doesn't. It doesn't change an effing thing. OK, look, I'm sorry you're going through a tough time. I hate this. I'm sorry. You aren't helping. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know how I'm supposed to help you. Maya? OK. What's this pulky thing? Uh, OK. Can't look at that. Can we see her art? Oh, no, look. We need Look at her art. I think we need to make a judgment call on it. Come on. Skander? All right, fine. She's not going to look at anything else. I really, I'm so curious to see her art, though. <sighs> okay. Overall, Maya is unhappy. Agree. Maya is attempting to become well-known. Agree. Maya's attempts to, efforts to become well-known are unsuccessful. Um, seems like it. Oh. I don't know if I like learning this much about someone I don't know. It makes me feel tired for some reason. Erland. Hey, could I meet up with you again? Like for coffee, maybe? Something happened that I want to talk to you about. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I just wanted to ask something. I'll meet you wherever. What happened? Something at work. It's not a big deal, honestly. But I wanted your opinion on it. And I don't want to text about it. Okay. There he is. Thanks for meeting up with me on kind of short notice. I didn't mean to worry you, it's just something I wanted to talk about. It's fine. What happened? Well, what happened was... Where should I start? First of all, Rainer wants Eliza to be more than something that's used just for therapy. Here we go. He sees it as more of a general system for talking to people, like a personal assistant. The counseling is just one of a whole range of apps he has in mind for the future. I'm familiar with his thinking on that. Okay, so in service of developing these things, Rainer wants us to make copies of Eliza's core data and hand it off to multiple teams around the world. Some of them not even Skanda teams. Contractors, vendors, random partners. Sounds like a big file to move around. It is, but that's not the problem. What's the problem? Well, so we're fine with sharing Eliza with whoever wants it? Anyone just gets access to the corpus? Sounds like a pretty typical process. That's how big companies work, isn't it? I know, but it just feels wrong to let all these teams poke and prod at it like it's a specimen for them to dissect. Who knows what they'll do with it? Eliza is built from people's real thoughts and feelings. I wouldn't say it has humanity, but it was built from humanity. There's something there. So when Rainer talks about it like, we'll just duplicate this data set and have the labs do whatever it is they're going to do, how do we know they'll treat it with the respect it deserves and not just pry it open? slice it up into little pieces. It bothers me. I know, it's silly. I know it's just data. I shouldn't care about this stuff. Erland. This is the first time I've heard a concern like this raised. I know where you're coming from, though. Sometimes you grow attached to the things you work on. Like, really attached. Yeah, I've put a lot of thought and work into Eliza since I inherited it. It's natural that maybe I'm a little protective, right? thought maybe you'd feel the same way. I left that all behind. It's turned into something I hardly recognize now. I just wish I knew what to do. What choice do you have? I'm not sure. This is the first time something like this has happened to me. I did take an ethics of engineering course in school, but the examples were all pretty clear-cut problems. Would you build software for a bomb? That kind of stuff. I didn't expect my personal feelings to be mixed up in it, too. <laughs> Listen to me talk. Eliza being special, something worth protecting. I'd be a laughing stock if I started saying those things at the office. My coworkers would say, Come on, Erlen, stop attributing human qualities to this piece of data. It's not the same thing as real people. It's just a corpus that has nothing to do with the people that generated it. And besides, don't you want Eliza to help more people? This is how we get there. And who am I to argue with that? These are reasonable points, but I don't know. I think maybe something does live on, even when you take the names out, even when you anonymize everything. People's stories are still inside there, in some form, in some way. I just want to make sure we have some respect for them. Welcome to your first moral decision in tech, Orland. It certainly won't be your last. It's not much of a decision. Like you said, I don't really have a choice. I just have to go along with it. I was so amazingly lucky to get this opportunity. 
running the whole Eliza program almost as soon as I graduated college. Rainer took a big chance on me. I can't just walk away from that. Besides, if I left because of something like this, I'd be giving up all the ways I can make a difference by staying. Rainer isn't a bad person either. He's just pushing for his own goals. I need to see this through. I'll do what he's asking me to do. Sorry, thanks for listening to me talk in this confused way. I'm usually more together than this. I've probably kept you from something important. No, it's okay. I'd already finished up work for the day when you texted. People seem to assume I'm busy, but I'm really not. Not these days. Later tonight, I'm going to visit a friend, but that's all I have going on. Okay. Well, sorry. You can stop apologizing, too. Right. S uh, right. Thanks, Evelyn. Well, I for one should get back to the office. Another meeting. Is it with the team in Romania? No, the Boston office this time. It's late for them, so I should try to get it done quickly. Erland hurries off to his next meeting. Should I get some more coffee? We've got Ray. How did your first transparency mode go? I was going to ask after you finished, but I didn't see you in the office. Oh, I had to duck out right after. Sorry. No problem. There weren't a lot of questions. I thought there'd be more. Yeah, for whatever reason, it's always very terse, and the questions are really short. I thought maybe you could tell me why. <laughs> the feature came after my time, so I'm not sure. If I were to take a guess, Eliza only needs human confirmation to make sure it hasn't messed up. It's like it already knows it has the right answers. Which would make it rather advanced as a system. I don't know of any other program capable of something like that. Maybe Rayner is right. About what? Oh, he's very, uh, upbeat. About Eliza's capacity to understand humans and act like them. I'm not sure I believe that, but I guess it is impressive in some ways. Yeah, it is. I feel lucky. Lucky that I get to be here and witness this revolution. And lucky I got to meet you too. I really enjoyed your company the other night. You are right, baking really is fun. Isn't it? Maybe you can come over again sometime. Gotta run. See you soon. Okay, what we got going on here? He asked Roland's name and wrote Aaron. He should ask his customers to spell their names. He got one wrong before, didn't he? Nora's, I think. Hmm. I could stand to wear something with a little colour in it. I looked it up. Komarebi means the light filtering through leaves. Something you can see when the sun is out. That's a nice word. We don't have anything in English that kind of... A word for that in English, I should say. Time to head to Nora's place. I find what looks like one of Capitol Hill's older buildings. I wonder how much longer it'll be around. Lately, it feels like everything's being replaced. Hey! Oh, sorry about the mess. It's a little messy, but not in a careless way. Just scattered. Lots of electronics everywhere. Oh, it's fine. Not like my place is super clean or anything. Is this all music equipment? Most of it. There are some controllers I was working on, too. I wanted to create this real-time control apparatus. You know, like that thing that Imogen Heap uses? Who? Who? You don't know who that is? Okay, I'm totally going to show you some videos later. I wanted my version to react to changes in my body temperature, too, so it could get more excited as the set went on. Or maybe it would really get going if I had a fever. <laughs> ah, I like that idea. Turning sickness into art. Do you want anything to drink? Or I could set up a basic patch on the Euro rack for you to play around with. A basic patch on the Euro rack. Are you nervous? I think the best way to learn music is just diving in all the way. If you're willing to experiment and play around, you will learn so much. Maybe later, yeah. Okay. Well, sure. Let me see if this amp is still working. After the show, it went kind of a little strange. Nora starts to tinker with some of the equipment. 
Music technology is just like any other kind. You take the inputs and you translate them to the outputs. Once you learn the basic principles, it all just flows from there. Oh, that gives me an idea. You could take metrics from Eliza Sessions and have them direct a dynamic music score. Like if you took the head tilt value or the eye tracking and used them to drive the parameters of pitch and filter, it'd be like... <laughs> that doesn't sound like something a counseling client might want to hear. Oh, no, I didn't mean for the client to listen to. I meant it more like uh, if you were going to make like a performance art piece based on a person in counseling. You know what I mean? Um, I think I do. Ugh, I miss having access to those cameras and sensors. I should have kept some instead of returning them to Skanta like a good girl. I bet those components would have enjoyed being liberated for the purpose of art instead of being used to degrade our humanity one little bit at a time. You don't like where things have gone? I'm worried, Evelyn. Sure, maybe this huge database of people's deep, dark secrets is going to be used 100% properly. Maybe it will always be kept completely safe, and we can completely trust Skanda to do the right thing. Now, and in the future. 10 years from now. 20 years from now. 100 years from now. Sorry, I know you still might work there. I just have so little confidence in these big tech companies right now. They act like they have all the answers, instead of listening to people's concerns. And if you ask them why they aren't listening, they can't even explain the reasoning in a clear way. They just want to win. You've been a proxy for a while. I bet you've already seen some privacy mistakes. Or at least some things that made you think. Yeah, I have. <laughs> I knew it. A guy like Rainer doesn't get that he might not be allowed to do certain things. Is that really the future you want to help build? It, it's not even that I don't trust Rainer, even though I don't. I wouldn't trust anyone with a store of data like that. It wouldn't be so difficult for employers, government, anyone to combine different sources together and eventually learn everything about you. Everything. They'll know your face, your body, your medical history, and now everything you told the counselor in private too. It's kind of like a nightmare to imagine it. That's why I left. That's why I thought it was important for me to stop making a contribution to something like that. You don't think I might be able to change things from within? <sighs> if I still worked for Rainer and I said these things, I'd be called a troublemaker and he'd find a way to get rid of me. You know how it works, Evelyn. You have to be a true believer to last long at a place like that. Once you develop doubts, you are committing heresies. Are you a true believer? Probably not. He said something strange recently. He thinks Eliza could be the base for some kind of general artificial intelligence. No. Strong AI? Really? Ugh, there's something about the books these guys read, the conferences they go to. Everything is so totalizing, so utopian. I think it messes with their brains. I don't think you could spend longer than a few days in a tech company executive suite before you completely lose touch with the real world. What if it's true, though? So what? What if it is? Say Rainer is right, huh? And Eliza becomes the basis for human-like machine intelligence. What does that mean for you? How do you want to take responsibility for that? Okay, I need a drink now. Hold your thought and let me make drinks. You like absinthe, don't you? Huh. I think I do. Maybe. Mmm. You'll like this. I promise. <laughs> My bad absinthe is interesting. Nora busies herself in the kitchen area, making drinks, humming some kind of tune. Okay, we can look at stuff. It's a kitty cat. Aw, kitty. That's the one she said was a modular. I suppose they call them modulars because they're made out of modules. Modular. Doesn't feel like I'm making much progress here. I wonder how you're supposed to know which sounds go together. Seems both complicated and weirdly arbitrary. Erland, thanks again for meeting with me earlier. Sorry for being weird. Remember, you don't need to apologise. Right. 
Um, what do you think of Rayner's future goals for Eliza? Like when he says if we gather enough data it could become a general intelligence. Um... Hmm. No, that will never happen in the foreseeable future. Rayner is smart, but he doesn't quite understand the technology and its limits. And supposedly a subject matter expert in this stuff. AI was my concentration in school. So I know the current state of AI is way behind where the public thinks we are. <clears throat> but when I listen to Rayner, I start to think what he says might be possible. It feels like reality can warp around him. Who's to say, maybe I don't have enough of the imagination to see it like he can. Eliza does have extremely detailed data from thousands of clients. Speech, facial movements, expressions, people's descriptions of what life is like for them. And we keep adding to it, and it keeps getting better. So in the future, maybe Eliza can simulate a human being at a general level. But when programs indistinguishable from real people are common, how do you define what's real anymore? You might never be sure a message came from a real human being again. I can't stop thinking about this. What if it comes true? What if... Eliza becomes a sentient being. Who knows what's possible in the future? It's not clear what you mean by those terms, though. How do you know that you, yourself, are sentient? Haha, <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question now that I think about it. I mean, I could say I feel conscious if I knew what that meant. But what's to prevent me from saying I feel conscious even if I'm only providing responses I think you want to hear? What if my own consciousness is an illusion I experience? I'd not considered this. Wow, it's blowing my mind a bit, sorry. Philosophers have discussed this. Yeah, I should read some, I know. Thanks for not minding me chatting about this, I don't mind. You sure you don't have any technical questions, though? This is more fun, haha. <laughs> But you're right, I might be getting a little ahead of myself. Sorry for texting so much. Erland. Yeah, right. Oops. Thanks for listening. You're welcome. Hey, hey. Who's that texting you so much? Has Evelyn found a special friend? No, it's not like that. Ah, too bad. It's this guy named Erland. I guess he's the new head of engineering for Eliza. Huh, I never heard of him. He must have started recently? Yeah, less than a year ago. Right out of school. Oh, wow. A little baby engineer. <laughs> cute. Ever since I met him, he's been messaging me a lot. My goodness, so he likes you. I don't think it's like that. No? Isn't that the textbook case of liking someone? Lots of messages all the time? It's really more like he needs some kind of mentor figure. He reminds me of how we were when we graduated. Unsure what to think about the decisions these companies make, how they're made. I hope you're telling him to run away while he still can. When he first introduced himself, he said he had questions for me about Eliza, so I said, sure, feel free to ask. I thought he meant, like, technical or architectural questions. Instead, he wanted to talk more generally about things like, what was the code name for Eliza during development? What was Damien like? Or if I think the same way Rainer does about Eliza's future. And you told him, no, Rainer is clearly in some bizarro world, right? That it's a tech executive's utopian fantasy and it won't come to pass. At least, not in the way he thinks. I tried to encourage him to think for himself. Ah, Evelyn. I could see what this is really about. Look, I don't know much about the motivation in your life, but... If it's truly your desire to continue to improve Eliza, then you should go for it. Go back to Skanda headquarters and work for Rainer and earn a big salary. At least you know what you're getting into. You would be surrounded by smart people and advanced technology. It would be nice. I understand it. And while you're in that position, maybe you could uh, develop some kind of next level AI. <laughs> Who knows, right? It's only that... I can't imagine your technology will only be used for good things. Maybe Reiner promises that it will be. But do you trust him? What about the person who comes after him? What if the company merges with another one and the leadership changes? I wish I didn't sound so negative about this, but lately it's been a soul-searching time for me and my friends in tech. We have a lot of conversations about what we can do when our work is so easily used for morally questionable purposes. Do we try to control how our inventions are applied? Is that even possible? Or do we say, we only invented it, we didn't tell you how to use it, it's not our fault. 
I think the inventor of gunpowder said much the same thing. <laughs> that's why I envy you a little bit for wandering off like you did. Sometimes I think that's the only real solution, to walk away. I know that wasn't exactly a positive thing for you, Evelyn, but I wonder if it's the better choice in the end. Doing nothing at all. Technically, I worked at a bookstore for part of the time. That's mostly it, though. It's weird. It feels like no time at all. I can hardly remember any of it. For me, it's hard to imagine. I always have to be working and, and busy. I get so unhappy and restless if I'm not doing something all the time. What is it like to do nothing? Well, at first I tried to be productive. I would get up in the morning like I meant to go to work, get dressed, try to do a personal project or something. It didn't last for long. I told myself I just needed to take it easy for a while and unwind. Things at Skanda had been so intense and so emotional, I didn't even realize it. I felt like I'd been crumpled up into a tight little ball. I wasn't sure I'd ever be able to relax again. I wish I could say I took advantage of the time that I went out and did things or that I read a lot of books or something, but I didn't. I started to sleep in, and I started to care less and less about working on projects. I would stay in bed even though I was awake. Sounds like depression. This blankness would come over me, and it just seemed fine to do nothing. All of the things I'd promised I'd do fell away, and other people kind of fell away too. I stopped keeping in touch. I let conversations die. I thought that my technical contributions to the world were over with, and that maybe I'd just work that bookstore job for the rest of my life. I was by myself, and I thought, that was alright. I thought, that's how it is, really. Everyone's alone. I'm just being honest about it. I was 31 when I left Soren's group. Now I'm 34. I just slept into my mid-30s. So, now, here I am. Nora reaches out and puts her hand on top of mine. Evelyn, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for not saying something this whole time. I should have contacted you. It's alright. You had to live your own life, right? You notice someone isn't posting and it's just like, maybe they're taking a break. I understand. Well, I hope you feel better now. I suppose that sometimes it takes a while. Maybe. I don't know what to think anymore. I'm not even sure I know how to think anymore. Then forget it for now. Hey, Evelyn. Yeah? You wanna get super high and watch cyber goth <laughs> music videos? I... Uh -huh. You heard me. Yes. Yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. Mm, I knew you were a woman of refined tastes. We ended up staying up very late. Nora crashed on her couch so I could have the bed. Maybe it was the unfamiliar environment, but I couldn't sleep that night. Questions without answers kept running through my mind. What am I supposed to do? Who am I supposed to be? Chapter 5 So I'm going to leave it there for now. Start of a new chapter that feels appropriate um, and say thanks very much for watching this episode of Eliza. Lots more food for thought here. Um, it's really interesting that it, it's sort of covering different topics each time, you know, um, the use of AI, the use of people's information and data and all, all sorts of stuff. It's, so yeah, again, really appreciate any comments in, on this video about you know what you think about some of the stuff that, that's come up. Uh, always very interested to read and uh, discuss those. Um, yeah, and if you could give this video a thumbs up, that'd be great. It, every, every little bit of interaction helps the channel to get noticed and to grow, so that'd be amazing. As would uh, subscribing as well if you're watching this and haven't done so before. It'd be great to have you on board. So thanks very much once again, and I hope to see you next time for more Eliza. Bye for now. <laughs>